2020 Perth Grange Research Update, growers and advisors got a sneak peek at the latest plant disease diagnostic technology being developed in the US. So we're in very interested in new diagnostics that are quicker and that can detect disease prior to symptom development in the field. Professor Jean Restaino directs the Emerging Plant Disease Cluster at North Carolina State University. Alongside engineering collaborator, Dr. Xing Shang Wei, Jean and the research team have created new technology that can identify crop disease in the paddock via a smartphone. Generally, when diseases are identified, you have to go out in the field, get a sample, bring it into the laboratory, either isolate the microbe in culture or do a DNA analysis, which can take days to weeks for a diagnosis. So the technology that we're developing uh, is uh, more rapid and it can be deployed in the field and it's uh, really a, a simple uh, technology that anyone could use. There are two different infield sensors. One analyzes volatile organic compounds, VOCs, while the other analyzes DNA. Both technologies have been proven to accurately identify disease before symptoms have occurred. Well, when a, when a plant uh, becomes infected by a pathogen or an insect pest, it releases a series of volatile organic compounds. And these volatile compounds are signatures of infection. So what we figured out with some fungal pathogens is we can inoculate a plant and, eat, and before symptoms occur, within two days after inoculation, the plant starts to emit the volatiles. We can read the volatile signature and identify the pathogen before symptoms. The VOC sensor works by placing a leaf in a small container for about 15 minutes. A device attached to the smartphone then sucks air into the chamber that contains a paper strip. The strip is embedded with an array of chemical reagents that change colour when they come into contact with a specific chemical group. After just one minute, the strip will be able to indicate which disease is present. And it's proven to be 98% accurate. The microneedle technology is a small patch. The second sensor uses plant and pathogen DNA to identify disease. It's called microneedle patch technology. Well, microneedle patch technology has been used for uh, a number of years now in the medical field. If you know someone that has diabetes or is trying to stop smoking, you may have seen a patch being used. They're used to deliver drugs in humans, but they also can be used to gather information like blood sugar levels, etc. So we're taking this microneedle technology and applying it to plants so that we can actually measure the health of the plant, measure the DNA content, or we can uh, measure what pathogen is there. Uh, so the microneedle technology is kind of a new technology that will allow us to monitor plant health. So how's it work? Well, a microneedle patch is attached to the leaf of a suspect plant, held in place for a few seconds and then peeled off. It's then rinsed with a buffer solution to wash genetic material off the microneedles into a sterile container. From there, specific assays are run to identify what disease is present. We're running lamp assays, which are isothermal, very rapid, quick assays for identification of pathogens. And many crops aren't infected by one pathogen, they might have multiple pathogens. So by um, tailoring the cocktail of, of assays in our lamp assay, we can identify, we can multiplex and identify multiple pathogens at the same time from the DNA. We remove the DNA from the patch within about a minute after puncturing the leaf. A typical DNA extraction can take hours or even days, depending on how elaborate you get. Using expensive kits, these patches uh, cost cents to produce and, they, and we can make them out of biodegradable materials as well so that they'll, you know, we won't have to deal with plastic. So far, the team at NC State has focused on using these sensors to detect key fungal pathogens for the potato and tomato industries. But with such promising results, the scope of the project is expanding into bacterial and viral diseases, as well as more crop types. Well, we started out the work with uh, Phytophthora infestans. It's the pathogen that caused the Irish famine. It infects potato and tomato, and it 
it results in billion dollar losses globally. And we're planning on scaling the technology into the field and looking at multiple pathogens as they occur in space and time. Sensor technology that can be attached and left on plants is also being explored, meaning growers could be immediately alerted to pathogens even if they're not physically standing in the paddock. Wearable sensors might allow us to monitor plant health over, over time, and, uh, but they have to be resilient to climate and ideally we want to wirelessly transmit data and not have to physically go out and remove the the patches or the volatile sensors. So these are the kinds of things we're working on now, deploying in the field, because all of our work's been done in a phytotron in a plant growth chamber, and we haven't deployed them in the field yet. So that's really the next big step to know if they're gonna be field ready. With a lot of commercial interest around these two sensors, Jean's optimistic about the future of this technology and its adoption across the grains industry. So we have a lot of opportunities in future directions we can go with this technology. The more I read outside of the discipline of plant pathology and traditional diagnostics and read more into the work that's going on in the medical community, I'm seeing a lot of opportunities for, for new applications of this technology in agriculture. You know, people, growers are spending more money on technology and data analytics. Crop consultants are, are, are using this data to monitor farms over space and time. And I can see this technology fitting in nicely into crop uh, monitoring platforms that are, growers are already starting to buy into. Professor Jean Restino, plant pathologist at North Carolina State University. And this video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.